The following tutorial was recorded in front of a live studio audience. Hello and welcome to this vMix tutorial where we're going to go through some of the brand new features of vMix 28, but they're the micro features, they're the little ones, so we're going to do them nice and quickly. The first thing that we're going to look at is the number of streams we have access to. So if we go down to this button here, we've got our streams here, and now we can pick from five different streams and we can have them all running at the same time if we want. So we could have something like YouTube and Facebook, Twitch and a live LAN and something else as well. So that's pretty cool. That's the first new micro feature. The next one is our encode statistics. So when you're running vMix and you're recording or streaming or sending out a uh, SRT stream or sending out an NDI stream, you are potentially encoding. So we're gonna go to the statistics button down here and I'll show you where you can see all of your encodes. Looking here, we've got the encode button here. And at the moment, I'm doing two recordings. I'm recording the interface and I'm recording my camera. So both of those are currently using the H.264 hardware encode that is on our NVIDIA graphics card. While I'm here, I'm gonna show you that we've got a refresh and reset button. We've always had a reset button, but now we've got a refresh button that allows you to refresh the list if you've added or removed any of your inputs. Next, we're gonna have a look at a performance indicator that might be handy to know that you're running vMix at its top performance. So we go up to settings, and from here we go down to performance. And now, not only can we see what graphics card is in use, but we can also see how much memory it has available and whether resizable bar has been enabled on our graphics card. So very handy information because if resizable bar is enabled, you then have a lot more access to the memory that is useful for vMix for very particular tasks. In the past, you've only had access to a much smaller amount of cache memory. So with that amount of memory there, we can then go down and have a look at our GPU mem, and you can see that at the moment I've got 0% used because it is such a small amount that I'm using right now. If I had a heap more content running in vMix, then this might be one or two or 3%, but nice and low at the moment. Next topic is all about audio. The first one that I wanna to talk to you about is the scroll effect. So in settings, we now have an audio setting called Disable Mouse Scroll Wheel on Audio Mixes. Now by default, this is gonna be off. So I'll tick it off so that you can see what it looks like. And I'll show you what it looks like when I scroll here on the input, you can see that my volume is going up and down. Now, because some users will have lots and lots of inputs and they need to scroll through this menu, sometimes you can accidentally scroll on one of those and adjust volume when you don't want to. So we've just given you that opportunity to turn that off right here. So by default, we're keeping this off now because we prefer it that way. The next thing to talk about is our audio outputs or our buses. So in vMix, we have access to a multitude of buses if they're enabled. You can see I've got them all here. They're currently kind of hidden. I can right click on them to show them to you. But if I wanted to set something onto say bus C, in the past I would right click and select C. Now I have the ability to tick show all bus buttons. So I'm ticking that now and now I can see all of my bus buttons and I can adjust them here. So I can tick C and E and so on and so forth. This might be handy for you and you might want this to be on at all times for all of your inputs. So you can do that by going up to settings going to audio outputs and ticking always show all bus buttons in audio mixer. So I'm gonna tick that, click okay, and now you can see that all of my inputs have those bus buttons available for me. So I'm gonna leave that on as well because we also find that quite handy if we're running with multiple buses. And then finally, the last topic of audio and our last topic on this little training video is the ability to capture system and application audio. So if I go to add input, I can now go to audio input and select application audio or system audio. 
So if I pick system audio, that's just gonna pick up the Windows system audio, just as is any applications running audio at that time, that combination of audio. If I select application audio, I can then pick a particular application that is also running on the machine. Say I've got VLC running or I've got a YouTube video running or something like that. I can pick up that audio from the dropdown list of applications that are running. Okay. That is all of the new micro features of vMix 28. I hope you found it helpful. Please reach out to us at support at vmix.com if any of it doesn't make sense and you need some help. Alternatively, check out some of our other training videos because you might be able to glean the information you need from there. Uh, thanks for watching this one and we'll catch you on the next one. <laughs> Who knows how that went? Moda, moda, Bruh. we can then, we can. <laughs> We're going to cut Hang some, some We sections. will have to cut that. Take a deep breath and then just start again. <laughs> from, from the top. From the top. <laughs> no. This... Apparently the audio is back on this surface. Apologies, everybody. From the top. <laughs> Alternatively, check out some of our other YouTube videos too. This is the fun of making videos. This is the fun of making tutorial. training videos. This is what happens. This, is, so. this happens to us every time. Oh, I hope this is as entertaining to you as it is to Tim. <laughs> Alternatively, <laughs> every time, every time. Great.